Working in finance and accounting in corporate America can seem to be the career goal at first. That's where the money is, right? Well, it's not always a dream. And if you're working in finance or accounting, you may want out. But is that type of pivot even possible? It is. And in this video, we're going to be explaining from firsthand experience how you can do it too. Today, I'm pleased to announce that I'm joined by Heath Adams, aka The Cyber Mentor, who's had a major positive impact on the cybersecurity community as both a penetration tester and as a teacher. But before his cybersecurity career, Heath was an accountant. Heath's going to tell us exactly why he wanted to pivot into cybersecurity, what challenges he encountered on this journey, what accountant skills were transferable into industry, and what lessons learned he wants to share with you. So settle in, grab a pen and paper, and let's discover how you can pivot into cybersecurity. Hey, Heath, how are you? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Thanks so much for being here. So, Heath, uh, you know, the accountant Heath, explain to us, why did you want to go from accounting into cybersecurity? Yeah, ultimately, I chose accounting because it was a very safe field. And I felt like, hey, I'm good at math. There's always a need for an accountant. So let's just go ahead and do this. And that's what I went and got my degree in, uh, got working in the field and quickly realized that it just wasn't my lifestyle. The, uh, the management was not good no matter where I went. Uh, the people were just kind of always worn down. We worked a lot of hours. We didn't get paid a lot of money and it just wasn't a, a good, healthy environment. So uh, there was one day that I just up and decided, hey, I'm turning my keys in at lunch. I'm, I'm getting out out of here and I'm I'm going to go on to to other things and uh for me the other thing ended up being in IT and eventually cybersecurity I been using a computer since I was four. I was on Prodigy before I was on AOL, which is showing my age a little bit. But uh, I just was really familiar with with the IT space. I wasn't really good at anything, but I knew that, hey, I've always troubleshooted and fixed issues for myself. I probably could do that for other people. So I uh, ended up just starting working in IT, got a job in help desk, was able to talk my way in somehow. Got a bunch of certifications and uh, along the way somebody told me that you could work as an ethical hacker uh, i always thought it was some bad people doing that the hacking but apparently there's good people that did it too and uh, i went home and i studied and just figured out what i needed to do and i just took those paths and eventually got into the the cybersecurity field and the the field of ethical hacking that's awesome thanks for uh ringing the bell on prodigy also CompuServe, perhaps uh just yes, a yes. <laughs> same age i haven't thought about that in a minute so all right, so Heath, you're gonna you're gonna do it. You turn your keys in. Huge commitment to yourself. What challenges did you encounter on this journey? Uh, there was a lot of times of just doubt because you would get to these job applications. I remember the job that I got. I, I was almost clicked X on the application because I knew I wasn't qualified. There was a three year minimum IT experience. They wanted different certifications, A plus, Net plus, and pretty standard for, for help desk. But uh, I, I was really worried about doing that and not having a chicken and egg situation experience or certifications and how do you get those and what do you do? Uh, and I just figured I'm gonna start applying, I'm gonna go out and I'm going to, either these jobs are gonna call me back or they're not. And if they do, I'm just gonna go in there and I'm gonna be honest. So that was my biggest hurdle was I need to be honest with myself. I need to be honest with these employers. I need to find somebody to take a chance on me. Uh, and that was the, the biggest hurdle. Once somebody took a chance on me, I was able to excel and do whatever I needed to do in that that job to be successful. It was just getting that initial foothold that was uh, the most difficult. I love it. And, and really inspiring words, people that like, you know, if you don't check all the boxes on a job app, a, a job rec, still apply, right? It, it's always like almost like a wish list that they've got out there, not like the minimum requirements for any particular candidate. So Heath, um, okay, so you're gonna, you're gonna go into cyber, you're applying to all these jobs, um, in both IT and cybersecurity, what type of accountant skills were transferable? Did you have to start over from scratch or were you able to leverage? No, there's actually quite a few. So I worked in uh, public accounting and more specifically, I was on the audit side. So a lot of the stuff that I did was, hey, we go over to clients, we would talk to C-levels, CEO, CFO, um, whoever was an important decision maker and we would gather data and interview and talk to uh, them sometimes they weren't technical people when it came to finance so you'd have to explain things to them in a way that uh, they could understand and that you could break it down for them and so we would do that we have to write reports that would get submitted and sent out and we'd also have to debrief what we found to them so it's a consultant at the end of the day i'm a consultant now I, I, just because i'm doing ethical hacking or cybersecurity, i'm still writing reports i'm still having to translate technical knowledge down to like a five-year-old level i'm still having to 
uh, debrief information to people and communicate with C-levels. So a lot of that transferred over. The technical knowledge was different, but the skill set, the communication, the, the report writing, the presentation, that all stayed the same. It's a great point. So, so someone listening to this right now who's like ready to turn their keys in at lunch because, you know, they're like enough of this accountant business. What kind of lessons learned did you pick up looking back that you might share with them to help them have a faster or more optimized path? Sure. It's always run your own race. And you're going to come across a lot of people that said, I did this. You have to do this. I got this certification. You have to get the certification. That is not true. Uh, the job posting is a great example. You do not have to have three years. You may have to have some knowledge or some desire and drive but that can be enough. Just because somebody went and worked on help desk and then went and worked as a network engineer doesn't mean you have to go do that. You could study, get certifications and skip a job or two if you need to. Everybody's path is different. And that's why I love the series is because everybody comes from different walks of life. IT is one of those special fields where you don't have to necessarily go to college and do every single certain step and get this certain certification and pass this exam in order to get into the field. You can come from these unique backgrounds. And I think that diversity makes us unique. So if anybody ever tells you, you have to get something that's not true or you have to work this job that's not true do your due diligence make sure you do your research and study what it is that you actually need to go out and do take a best list out of what's going on the last year or two and compile that see what makes most sense for you in your life and then go moving forward with your plan how how important are practical skills in the current market from what you've seen right there's there's education certification practical skills experience how valuable is practical skills right now? Oh, it's super valuable. And it's a lot of you, if you can take on a resume, and that's what's the hardest part is how do I convey on a resume of practical skills? And so if you could take, hey, I don't have a lot of work experience, maybe I don't have certifications, maybe I don't come from a background that can afford certifications, but I took classes, I self-studied, and I built out a lab, or I built out something that can show and demonstrate, I've got a GitHub, I can code, or whatever it might be, show those practical skills off on that paper. It's hard to do, but if you can convey that message, it shows off a lot of quality. It shows off passion and desire to be above and beyond just the, the job requirements or just the certification requirements that are out there. So uh, I'm a big fan of, of practical skills. It doesn't have to be a huge anything, but if you've got a home lab, you got a GitHub, you got something that you can just show off. I think it's really cool. Yeah. And one thing that I, I definitely want to uh, share because, uh, because you do have the Cyber Mentor Academy, which has a whole list of kind of entry level curriculum and courses. One particular one is the Practical Ethical Hacker. Now, Heath is a professional pen tester. He's very good at what he does, and he's actually consolidated all that knowledge into a, a, a course. Really, it's, it's now now five courses that leads to that practical network penetration tester certification. But can you kind of talk for a minute about how like those particular like education pieces might facilitate somebody transitioning into the field? Yeah. So what we're taking and, and what we're doing is just what we felt was different than everybody else. Because I went through the, the get off my lawn, go do these certain things. And uh, I, I was a help desk person. I was a network engineer. I did take all the certifications people told me to take. And then I realized that there wasn't a lot of value in most of that education or training. And there wasn't a lot of like on the job practical training when you got there. So we took that and we said, what does that look like? If I were to hire somebody or want to do this again, what, what does that look like? So we take people through certain skill sets through those five courses that will say, hey, if you get through this and you really understand the material, that will take you to a point where you can go succeed at an entry level job in the ethical hacking field. Yeah, it, and that when I said at the beginning of the intro about the positive impact on our community, this is in part what I'm talking about, making it accessible for people. I'll put a link in the description below to Heath's uh, website where all that content is. Heath, one final question. How valuable is networking, professional networking in the way of getting into the cybersecurity field, getting a job? Huge. Uh, it's probably one of the, the most important skills that you can have. And it doesn't have to be, I think a lot of us are introverted. A lot of us are maybe afraid of, of communicating and meeting others. And it doesn't have to be that per se. You can just be somebody that networks with people on LinkedIn or networks with people in like a Discord or a Slack or a community and just be a helpful human being. Give back what you take. If you ask questions, make sure you're helping other people because there's always somebody that wants to be where you're at right now. You may think that you're a beginner, but you're still farther along than you once were. And there's always somebody that wants to be in your shoes and wishes they could be there. So be helpful, communicate with others. And all you're doing and when you're doing that is you're planting seeds, uh, maybe a little bit of good karma, but 
people are watching. They're always watching. And this is a very small field. I got so many job offers when I was first coming into the pen test field because of just being that helpful person. It could be people that were C-levels and watching or IT managers, but it was also peers. Peers were seeing, hey, this person helped me out. Now there's a job opening on my team. I'm going to see if I can get this person in. So always be planting seeds. It doesn't have to be face to face. If you're introverted, that's OK. But if you can go out and do a meetup or go to a conference and meet people, networking is going to be the quickest way into a job because People are looking for that connection. And if they know you and they can trust you, they're more willing to bring you in for a job interview. Yeah, it, it's well put. And just to uh, use the analogy that Heath's using about planting seeds, be real. Not all the seeds are going to sprout flowers. But if you plant enough seeds, I guarantee you some of them will sprout flowers. So, so do the work. Uh, Heath mentioned a couple options, uh, meetups, conferences, etc. I do want to share uh, Discord. I personally find uh, there's a lot of cybersecurity Discord servers, but there are some that are better than others. Heath's TCM has a Discord server where there's a lot of great engagement going on. I don't know if it's exclusively focused on pen testing in there or for its general cyber. Is it general cybersecurity? It's general cybersecurity, yeah. Cool. So you can jump on Heath's Discord and engage in there. I'll put a link there. Also, Simply Cyber has a Discord server that I am biased. So, you know, draw your own conclusions. But I think it's a very inclusive, supportive community as well. So, Heath, I want to thank you for being here. If you're an accountant and you're thinking about jumping into cybersecurity, take these lessons learned from Heath uh, and, and, you know, start today making your way over into the field. Thanks so much, Heath. Yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Of course.